What's up, Copy Squad? It's your boy, Kyle Milligan, coming to you live from Delray Beach, Florida. And today I want to talk about creativity in your copywriting. And mostly because I've been struggling a little bit with like keeping my own practices going forward with like my two hours of deep work a day, sticking to that creative process of just sitting down, two hours of isolated work where I'm crushing it. And I started to realize that creativity does require a couple things. And I have like three to five lessons here that I kind of want to share that I've learned about creativity. Now, if you're a beginning copywriter and want to learn how to speak the language of copywriting, I would like to direct you kindly to my book. It's called Take Their Money. It's available at kylethewriter.com forward slash book. It's helping a lot of people, uh, veterans and newbies alike, get better at copywriting. So definitely check that out if you're new or if you need some fresh perspective. I got a cool testimonial from Rich Sheffern, the guru of gurus, that said, take their money was a fresh perspective to copywriting to him. He's been in the game for 17 years, so you could probably learn something if he's finding some fresh perspective out of it. So I've got some scattered notes here all over the place about creativity and idea generation. And mostly I want to speak to this idea of creativity and having your back against the wall. I've talked about this before and I do not approve of this strategy of <laughs> burn all the boats and just kind of like now your back's against the wall, like jump off the cliff and build the, the net on your way down. And I've kind of had a, a, a going at that right now with spreading myself too thin. And I'll tell you a couple things that I got going on right now that'll kind of just sum it up. So I'm spinning some plates, right? I got, I got this whole project here where I'm building a YouTube channel. I've got a front end funnel for the book that I just mentioned, Take Their Money. And I'm creating a back end funnel. I just created a new product, which is like a sales letter demonstration. And I don't have a title for it. What I'm talking about is you see how much this is kind of stacking up. And something I realized was it's hard to be creative when your back's against the wall. So one other thing I didn't just mention is I also have this condo that I've been looking into buying and it's gonna require a massive renovation and it's going to actually now it turns out require that I live in an Airbnb for like three months and that could run about nine grand to put me up in an Airbnb for three months out here in Boca Raton, Florida and I found myself not doing my deep work stuff even though I knew I just needed to sit down, block off time, focus my mind and do deep work. It's hard to be creative when your back's against the wall. And what I mean by that is I had no idea where I would live during these renovations. Um, and I think one of the things that I've kind of come to grips with is something's gonna have to give and I can't focus when I don't know where I'm gonna live. Here's three things I thought of that creativity requires. Creativity requires research and research requires time. Research requires patience. Creativity requires time which requires patience, and creativity requires your subconscious, which requires time and patience. So when you're working on deadlines, strict deadlines, or you don't have any options, right? When like your back's against the wall, like this has to work or, or everything's gonna fall apart, creativity fails. And the reason for that is because basically the idea generation process is four steps. Gather a bunch of research, tons of raw materials. Someone says like eight times more than you would need or something like that, seven or eight times more information than you need, and then just stuff all that stuff into your brain. That's step one. Uh, step two, analyze the hell out of it. Think about it very hard. Look for, draw lines, connections between all the different informations. Step three, unconscious processing. Walk away from it. Let it go, right? That's, that's just like let it sit here and become a shower thought. And then one day while you're in the shower, step four is have your big idea, right? That's like, oh, all this stuff just makes sense. Your subconscious brain processes it and it goes. Now, when your back is against the wall, when you're in a tight bind, when you spread yourself too thin, that process is short-circuited. It just simply doesn't work anymore because you can't sit down and be like, okay, today I'm just going to read about all this research stuff for two hours and not get anything done, right? It feels like you don't do anything. It feels like not get anything done because you didn't write anything. Now, if you're in a rush, you're in a bind, if you're spread thin, your subconscious is all over the place. It's not free to have that creative idea generation bandwidth that it needs in order to come up with ideas. And I'm speaking from a point of like personal experience over the last two to three months. Basically, I've watched my productivity plummet as this channel grows, as this uh, process for buying the condo gets deeper and deeper, as the renovations become more robust, more expensive, and are predicted to take even a longer amount of time. And I did a little trial run. I did a practice run today. And I thought, okay, to, we gotta keep doing what's working, right? So that's, that's the thing. You pick what works and keep doing it. Keep that top of mind, right? So what's working for me? What's got me here? What's got me here is writing a lot of copy. And I'm not doing that, so that's a problem. Okay, another thing that's really helping me out is this channel is actually doing well for me. It's actually making me some money, so let's keep doing that too, right? So I went, I did my hour of deep work, and man, it was good. With that, like completely out of my brain, and I had accepted it, like as again as like a trial. 
uh, I was like, yeah, we're not going to do it. We're just going to get rid of that. We're going to walk away from the deal, lose the money. I don't care because I can't write copy. And if I can't write copy, we can't make money. So then I dropped it. I stopped. I'm spread too thin. I'm not going to do it. And I had an amazing hour of deep work. That's the final result. And it almost seems like more clear than ever. If I don't have a way to sit down and write copy, if I don't have a way to sit down and let the creative process do its thing, I'm dead in the water. I'm dead in the water. I thought this would be like such an important lesson to, to say to the people out there who are starting writing copy with the people who spread themselves too thin. I think there was just a couple lessons. I just want to say creativity requires patience. It requires time. It requires your subconscious. So it requires your subconscious, therefore it requires time because your subconscious works on its own time. And it has to be free and it has to be happy and like have the bandwidth to just sit here and and play around with ideas, just tinker around with ideas. And if your brain is on overdrive and your throat is tense and you're not sleeping and you're freaking out about some other stuff in your life, it's going to be very difficult to be creative. So I am personally a minimalist and I recommend that you cut out all the bullshit and get down to whatever it is that you need to do. Find what's working and keep doing more of what works. Okay, I think that's all I got for you today, Copy Squad. So if you want to learn more about actual copywriting and like <laughs> how to become a stronger copywriter, or at least see my perspective on it, uh, I teach copywriting as a language and a how-to. You can check out my book. It's called Take Their Money, available at kylewriter.com forward slash book. All right, so that's all I got for today. Thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate you very much. I hope this was useful. Peace out, Copy Squad. Mm -hmm.